Hello, brothers and sisters on YouTube. Welcome、um, to my channel. And、uh, today I want to share with you a recent video I saw. It was、uh, made by a brother in Jesus, I believe,、um, in regard to Brother Justice. You know, as、uh, many of、uh, of you in this channel are well aware of, Brother Justice has been preaching on YouTube for the past at least ten years since two thousand eight. And、uh, four years ago, three or four years ago,、uh, I think Jesus Christ supernaturally led me to see Brother Justice videos on YouTube. At that time, I was still in China, so I had to use a VPN to jump over the Great Firewall of China to see those videos. And、uh, Brother Justice videos had a huge impact on my life. I think his messages were exactly the messages I needed to hear. Three or four years ago, I was in a very bad place at that time, and、uh, I was sinning. I was、uh, believing、uh, once saved, always saved, and I had no understanding of Jesus Christ. And it was during one of the prayer sessions, during out of sheer desperation, I cried to God, saying, "Please help me." And、uh, within a few days, He, Jesus Christ, led me to Brother Justice videos, and、um, I benefited a lot from the message from from. Um, Brother Justice, and、um, I believe I have, you know, I have done what the intent of Brother Justice was, which was to take my hand and put it in the hand of Jesus Christ, so that God can lead me personally.、Um, and、uh, for the past three and a half years, I had been、uh, translating Brother Justice. Message into Chinese and putting subtitles on those videos and posted in in, in China.、Um, really had the the response was not overwhelming at all. You know, I I expected much more、uh, feedback from the Chinese Christian community, but really there hasn't been a lot of feedback. People are just pretty much ignoring the message. And、um, about. About a year ago, about eleven months ago,、uh, Jesus had a given me a revelation and、uh, put me on on a different path,、uh, completely different from what I was doing at that time, which was translating Brother Justice videos. And、uh, he put me on this path, and so I've been on this path for for、uh, al almost a year now. And it's been it's been quite a ride. I feel like I'm a, a very different person from where I was last year.、Um, And I think, for the three and a half years that I was translating Brother Justice's video, I think it was really just a disciplining process. It's God training me. It's very similar to what Brother, you know, what Paul did when he first converted, when he first became a believer.、Uh, the Holy Spirit led him to the desert of Arabia, where he stayed there for several years, and the Scripture did not elaborate on. What、uh, Paul did during that time, but、um, you know, you can deduce that the Holy Spirit, God was teaching him of of His gospel, is training him,、um, making him ready for the task that God eventually assigned him to do. And I think,、uh, reflecting back right now, I think you know, between 2015 and 2018, that was what God was doing with me: is to shaping me up, training me. Drilling in his 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 doctrines, drilling his、uh, commands into my heart, so that in the future, in the path that he currently set me on, whatever problems that arise, I have a frame of reference to deal with with those issues. Whether it's to make a decision, whether it's to dealing with some people, I have a I have a frame of reference from which I can draw upon to make decisions, to make sound decisions that would. You know, being in line will, will that will be pleasing to God the Father, and、uh, you know I haven't really、uh, done any translation work of、uh, Brother Justice videos, and I think over the past year、um, I had a much clear understanding of different brothers, you know, including Brother Justice. I think one message of、uh, of Jean really. Um, resonated with me, and also I believe it's the truth: is that we should not be looking up to any man.、Um, 
it doesn't matter who who he is it doesn't matter how pious or how um, dedicated and faithful he might appear I think our Lord is the living God is Jesus Christ uh, is the Holy Spirit and God is alive and God wants to lead us personally this is one of the central messages of, um, of uh, brother young and even he himself said you know don't follow me I'm just a servant follow our common master Jesus Christ be led by the living God the living Holy Spirit let your instructions coming from him directly and he's going to teach you what to do and I think that's that's one of the most important messages I think Jesus gave brother young to preach but a lot of people don't don't see that a lot and myself included um, for those three and a half years even though I you know in hindsight I realized God was training me during those years but during those time I felt like I was following Jesus but in reality I was following young I was following um, brother justice I, I felt like oh there's this man who who is trying his utmost to follow Jesus Christ he's like a modern-day Apostle Paul and uh, I become enamored by brother justice and uh, I became his disciple you know in a certain sense and in hindsight I realized that's totally wrong that's not the intent of brother justice and that's definitely not the intent of, of God God will point us in our lives to different people um, from whom from, from 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 them we can learn lessons we can hear the message that God wants to pass on to us verbally but though but those people they're just lamp posts they're not the the source of the light they room they merely reflect the lights from the source which is which is Christ and it's a big mistake to lose who the true light is and the put too much focus on the servant or on the messenger or on, on the lamppost and I think that was my my mistake but I, I thank Jesus Christ for pointing me to John and I also thank him thank Jesus Christ for leading me to this new path so that I can serve him and live out my calling my, my purpose in Christ and I think that's the most fulfilling life anybody can have is not to relive any of the lives lives of the biblical apostles whether you're talking about Paul or John or, or Jacob or James it's it's not that I think all the disciples of Jesus Christ the true followers true followers of Jesus they're original and they're not they're not herd they're not a herd of sheep you know um, they're not the church going herd they have each one of them has a calling from Jesus Christ and I think this calling is pretty unique and it's very and you know from my personal experience at least it's um, very different from what the religious people have in mind especially if you surround yourself with religion if you only take if you only let the scriptures guide your life and if you take everything from scriptures literally as uh, some of um, you know the religious people do they when God tries to talk to you try to give you instructions to do this and do that you might ignore it and you might say well it's not you know the scripture didn't say that and the path you choose instead of taking you know listening and obeying Jesus Christ the path you choose might lead you astray and it might lead you to pain and suffering and sickness and uh, misery and sometimes you're wondering what's wrong you know you're saying I, I thought I'm, I'm following Jesus Christ I'm following the Lord why 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 am I in this situation and I think that's you know you can almost use that as a sign that um, you know maybe you're not following Christ maybe you think you think you're following Christ but you're really following an image of him the image that you contrived from the scriptures from the people in your church 
the people who surround you, or this just this imaginary Jesus Christ that uh, you composited from your experiences, from other people's experiences, or from the scriptures. And that's not the true Jesus, the true living God. And uh, when we, I think, a follower can tell whether he's following the living God is that, well, is, is there progress in their life, in their spiritual life? For me, I'm not the same person as I was 10 years ago. I'm not the same person as I was five years ago, three years ago. And I try to be a different person, even a little bit, try to be a different person every day. Um, try to prove even if it's 0.0%. And, and I think if we're truly following the living God, He's going to change us over time. Whether it's, you're talking about 10 years, 5 years, 1 year, or even a day, you could see the difference. If you say you follow Jesus, but for 10 years of your time, you're still preaching the same message as you did 10 years ago. If you're still at where you are, where you were 10 years ago, if your spirit, your spiritual life has not made, made any progress, if you haven't had any new revelations from Jesus Christ, then maybe it's time to examine your life and think that, am I serving Jesus? Am I following Him? Or am I serving myself? Or am I serving this image of Christ that I contrived in my mind? Because, yes, our Lord is, is uh, constant. God does not change. But we are human beings. Our understanding of God should change over time. As we become more mature, as we gain more knowledge of Jesus Christ, our knowledge should not stay stale. It should progress with time. Whether you're talking about 10 years or one year or, or even a day. And if you don't see this progress, then I would say, you know, reflect, reflect on yourself. Um, you might not think that, oh, you might, you might think, I live everything according to the letter of the Bible. You know, there's nothing I need to change because the Bible says so. Well, if you are preaching against treating the Bible as the word of the God, and which I totally agree, the, the, the living word of God is Jesus Christ, it's the Logos that became flesh. Uh, it's the Logos that created the universe at the instant of Big Bang that converted the infinite amount of energy into matter and space and time. And that Logos, 2,000 years ago, became our Lord Jesus Christ, a person, and, and came to this, this time and space bound uh, world to live with us, to teach us, and to die for us, to pay for the sin that we cannot pay ourselves and this logos after lived for 33 years was crucified paid paid our sin atoned our sin with god and was raised by him and his spirit right now lives with us in this physical world that's the holy spirit the, the, the spirit of jesus christ and that spirit is going to lead whoever submit their will to him whoever wants to follow him to serve his will to build his kingdom and this living spirit is, is our teacher you know it's going to reveal all the truth to us and it's not going to be the bible the bible is just a collection of people's experiences with god whether you know uh the old time prophets from uh, uh you know the the old testament time or you know the disciples of jesus christ who had daily interactions with him or from paul you know who who never really met the living Jesus physically, but through these supernatural revelations, he was able to communicate with Jesus through the, the Holy Spirit. So, God never stopped talking, never stopped revealing his truth to the world throughout history. So why limit ourselves to what's written in a book? You know, in the 66 books that was bound into this edition that we call Bible, which was written by men, edited by men, translated by men, and preached by men. And why do we call that Word of God? It's it's mind-boggling. And um, that's what I'm. The point I'm trying to to say is that uh, 
you know, I know Brother Young also talk about this many times, saying that Bible is not the Word of God. We should not treat Bible as, uh, um, you know, this infallible, this perfect thing that we have to follow to the letter. The lowest form of interpretation is to interpret literally. And that's the mistake I see many Christians, many people, many churchgoers, they, they make with the Bible. They say, well, it's written, and so I have to do it. And if you remember, that's what the devil did to tempt Jesus Christ. He says, it's written, so you have to do this. It's written, so you have to do this. And remember, Jesus' response is that it's also written. So, we shouldn't limit God with the Bible. Just like we shouldn't limit God with our own judgment, with our own um, fallibilities and deficiencies. We should be, remain open-minded and let God communicate with us, channel His Spirit through us to guide us. And if He does that, like we said before, we're going to grow spiritually. We'll gain new knowledge of God. If not every day, then every year, every five years, every ten years. Like I said, I'm not the same person as I, as I was 10 years ago. And it's a continuous process. I think one of the messages um, that uh, Brother Young had that I struggled with for a long time is that you have to be perfect. You have to be perfect right now. And, and uh, you have to repent um, and become perfect immediately. Otherwise, you're going to hell. And I think after... You know, when I heard, heard this me message initially, I thought that's true because it resonated with what I read through, you know, in the scriptures, part of the scriptures, you know, but we got to remember God is not, is not only the God of discipline, the God of laws, but God is also the God of mercy. And there is, and I believe, repentance is a process, is a journey. It's not a destination. Repentance really is, is to turn, to change direction. Before we were going the, in the direction of the world, we're following the world. And once we know Jesus Christ, we, we felt the touch of the living God. That's when we make this 180 degrees turn. And we go the other direction, towards God, towards eternal life. But we got to remember the eternal life to me is perfection. That perfection is the destination. To get there, we got to go through a journey, which we call life. And that journey takes time. So when I first heard about the preachings of Brother Young, I was struggling with it. You know, I, I, I was struggling with many sins. Um, I was struggling with pornography. I was struggling with masturbation, struggling with um, gluttony, with laziness, with like another one thing I really hate myself is I, I like to pick my skin, my, my feet, skin on my feet or my, or my hand. I just couldn't stop it. You know, uh, I have problem with anger. I was addicted to alcohol. And I knew that these things don't please God. These are sins, you know, for, for no better words and I try to change them but I couldn't every time I do I, I fail it doesn't matter how hard I try I fail and every day I listen to brother Young's message I become so depressed I've become so fearful that if the world is gonna end today God is gonna send me to hell I got so fearful to a certain point that I was having nervous breakdowns because I feel like my God, Lord, I know that you, you, know, you require perfection to enter your kingdom. And that is true. He does require perfection to enter his kingdom. But, and, and that's why my stress came from is, I felt, you know, I, I, I'm not perfect. If I die now, I'm going to go to hell. And, you know, that has a lot to do with, of course, the messages I've been hearing at that time. But recently, God has this revelation to me that, you know, repentance is a journey. It takes time. Yes, I, may, I might still fail at some of those weaknesses, the sins. But if I compare myself today to where I was 10 years ago, I was a different person. 10 years ago, I would 
do things and I wouldn't think he was wrong at all. Right now, if I, if I make a mistake, I will realize this is not what God wants me to do. But instead, instead of uh, dwelling on the mistake and become so depressed and so distraught to a certain point that you become totally emotionally um, immobilized, totally um, shackled, you know, because if you truly believe that if you make a little sin, if you make a mistake, you're going to go to hell directly. Then the best way is just to stay home and not do anything, not to try anything. And that was my problem for, for, for three years. You know, I was so fearful of God. I lost the sight of a bigger picture that God wants to use me as a tool to serve His kingdom. He doesn't want me to live in fear constantly. Yes, He wants us to have a healthy dosage of fear of Him. And that's the only thing we, we should fear is, is God. But to me, that fear is not the fear that, that I felt. The fear I felt was really just terror. W when God wants us to fear Him, it's really not fear. It's, it's a sense more related, more analogous to respect. Like you fear your father. or you, you, It's really like you respect your father. You fear your boss. You respect him. You don't talk to him like you, know, you treat him casually. You talk, him with a res you talk to him with a respect. You talk to him as if he is somewhere above you who has power over you. That's what God wants us to do. He didn't want us to, to truly you know, tremble, fear, to be fearful. Because fear is, is a paralyzing agent. It's not, God wants us to be free. Because the, the reason we need to be free is that we need to serve His kingdom. If you're constantly living in fear, you're not serving his kingdom. You'll be just worrying about making mistakes, playing the conservative, playing the safe instead of venturing out and actually do the things that he wants you to do and take the risks. And you will make mistakes, you know, doing the things. And God revealed to me, you know, I will allow mistakes. He revealed to me, I will allow mistakes in your life, in your journey of following me. And that's a very, very comforting thought. And he revealed to me that it's it's a journey, it's a progress, and as long as you're walking, you're heading towards the right direction. That's the most important thing. And many times, because of the influence of the church of religion, we feel like, you know, why why we, there's uh, you know you know try to create the next generation of internet. These things, you know, we should be preaching the gospels. I don't think I think people who think that they were really just you know reading too much scriptures and living in that scriptural world the world has been moving for the past 2000 years and god you shouldn't limit god with we shouldn't limit god with our imagination we you know we shouldn't think god is only the god of the bible god is the god of this world of the, of the universe since big bang until now he is in charge of everything i believe even the the rise of the internet the inventor of the internet he was doing god he was doing God's work. God commissioned him to, to create the internet so that his message could be reached directly, you know, to, to people instead of through a church. You know, um, and he had, he had, God had been doing this for the past 500 years since, since the invention of the printing press. All these people, they're servants of God. Many of them probably don't even know it, you know, and the, that's the message that I think that I really want to share with everyone is that we got to keep an open mind. We like we as Christians, you know, we define us with a certain mold. We we box our, ourselves in with, with with certain parameters, and we think that is what a proper Christian is supposed to be. I don't think so anymore. I think God has a calling for each and every one of us. And not everyone's calling is to be a preacher of his biblical teachings. Many of us, we might, you know, he might call us to, um, you know, to serve him by working on the next generation of the internet. And he's going to guide you. He's going to, you know, develop the skills that you don't have at this time. And he's, it's going to happen supernaturally, you know. And after five, six, seven, ten years. When you look back at this journey and you realize, oh my God, I've grown so much. Not only spiritually, but mentally, uh, physically, you know, um, 
in, 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 the, in the ways of getting rid of addictions and sins and bondages. Everything has to grow. And your message will change too. My message, if you look at my videos from two years ago, my message was different from my message today. And, you know, at that time, I, I boxed myself in with this religious mode. I said, well, you know, uh, this guy looks like Paul, sounds like Paul, so I need to imitate myself towards him. No, God doesn't want us to imitate anyone. Jesus Christ is original, right? I mean, I think that's everyone can agree with that. We as disciples of Jesus Christ, we shouldn't imitate anyone. We should live our own lives and be original. And that's the way to serve, Je serve Jesus. It's not to live in this hermit life, to isolate ourselves from the, the general society, so to prevent us from making mistakes, from sinning. That's, you know, for no better word, that's the work-based work -based salvation. That's not what God wants, you know. Uh, God doesn't want us, like, like I said, wants, doesn't want us to live in fear. He doesn't want us to constantly worry about our salvation. He doesn't want us to worry about anything. Not about money, not about our jobs, not about our salvation even. He, want, he created this world to be a wonder for us to live in it, to experience it, and also to serve it, to guide this world, be an instrument of him, to, to, so that we can function in this world according to his will. And he's shaping this world through us, through the church, the real church, the body of Christ. You know, not only through the religious part of the church, of, of the body of Christ, but also through many, many people, the, through the engineers, the doctors, the lawyers, the, the politicians even, you know, many of them, they're serving, they're doing God's work. They themselves might not even know it. And that's the message I want to share with everyone today. It's not, you know, my, my message today is not to, um, to put any, anyone down. I believe that if we're truly following Jesus Christ, every step of our life, along the way has a purpose is is to point us to the right direction and the right direction is him you know he's at the at the end um, of the journey and we need to follow him we need to follow him through the spirit the holy spirit is going to lead us along the way but god is waiting for us at the end of our journey and we just need to put our head down listen to the holy spirit let him guide us and that's all the message that i have today uh, it's just something that I've been pondering about for the past 24 hours. I would like to share with um, the community. And uh, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.